We had just finished the Hot in the Shade tour. A few weeks after the tour ended, Eric called me up and told me he hadn't been feeling well and had been to the doctor. And when the doctor did an x-ray, there was some sort of finger-like projection, is what Eric said, that was going in and out of one of his valves each time his heart pumped. And as strange as that sounded, I said, it's probably nothing to worry about. And Eric said, no, the doctor said it could be cancer. And I said, we always think the worst and we always get scared of things. I'm sure it's going to turn out to be nothing. And the next call I got was that it was cancer. I'd never faced a friend, let alone someone in the band, in a situation that seemed life-threatening. I remember him saying he was going to have heart surgery, that he had cancer in his heart. My understanding is that there's six cases of that a year. It's just unheard of, and it's terribly lethal. Both Gene and I said, we'll fly to New York, and when he woke up from surgery, we were there, spent a few days there, and then left. Our relationship with Eric declined over a period of a few months when he came back to Los Angeles and wanted to be in the band and play with the band. And I remember saying to him, your priority right now has to be to get better. The band is not something to be thinking about at this point. Your priority is your life. Eric flew to Los Angeles and we saw him socially once or twice and he kept asking to come back into the band and we said he'd have to take care of his health first. We then went off and cut a song for a movie, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, called God Gave Rock and Roll to You. It was originally done by an English group. We rewrote some of the lyrics. Eric begged us to play on the video of that, although he didn't play on the record. And we reluctantly looked at each other and hoped that he could do it. We did the video at Van Nuys Airport, and Eric was there. Somehow he looked healthy, he looked happy, and he played his heart out. And that was to be the last time we ever played with Eric Carr, ironically on a song called God Gave Rock and Roll to You. It was so hard for us to watch Eric do the video because he was so determined to do it right. He did it over and over. He was wearing a wig at this point. He was very, very weak, but it was more than pride that pushed him through it. It was his love of Kiss and his love of the fans that made this such a great final performance. The pain and the suffering he was going through in the midst of this is staggering considering what he did. We were about to start another album. I said, we have to keep moving forward, but you have to concern yourself with taking care of yourself. And I know that was crushing to him. We told him, we will go forward. If you get better, you'll come back. And that crushed him. And there was a side of Eric that was very, very sensitive. And at that point, he cut off communication from us and must have told his closest friends and his parents something that also had them stop communicating with us. We virtually were cut out from any information on how Eric was doing, what his condition was. The next thing I heard, a friend of mine, one of my best friends, had gotten a phone call from paramedics who had gone to Eric's apartment in New York City. And he was first semi-conscious and then unconscious. And he had a phone book and they had picked my friend's number and called and told him that, you know, Eric was unconscious and they took him to the hospital. And my understanding from there was that he was pretty much comatose for quite a while. His parents would not return our phone calls, would not give us any information, and uh, we didn't hear anything until I got a call that he had died. I broke down, cried, and uh, returned to New York for the funeral. It was horrendous, it was horrific. Um, I wish more than anything that I could have been more a part of the, the end, but you know, we all in hindsight can see things that we might have done differently had we known 
certain circumstances, but that is the way, you know, life unfolds sometimes. So I just remember going back to New York and, and just feeling dreadful and a sense of how unfair it was for somebody like Eric, who was truly a good person and a kind person, dying when there's so many other people who put their lives daily in jeopardy with drugs and alcohol and other kinds of abuses that show no respect for themselves. His death just doesn't seem fair. You know, there are many other people who weren't anywhere near as, as good. Good is the word for Eric Carr. Not nice, not friendly, not polite or charming. He was a good guy. <laughs> 